Let's say we have a patient whose pregnancy is complicated by a fetus with anencephaly and presents with a rapid increase in abdominal girth at 32 weeks. Abdominal ultrasound shows a significant increase in the amniotic fluid index. In order to clinch the diagnosis, we're going to have to think about the cause of too much amniotic fluid. In this lecture, we will cover what is amniotic fluid and what is its purpose. We will also be discussing the definitions of polyhydramnios and oligohydramnios and some of the pathologies that cause these phenomena. Amniotic fluid is a protective liquid that is confined within the amniotic sac that serves as a cushion for the baby during fetal development. This important fluid serves as a vehicle for which nutrients and water can be exchanged from mom to baby. Amniotic fluid is mostly generated from fetal urine production and is cleared from fetal swallowing of the fluid or intramembranous absorption. It is measured by the amniotic fluid index with its normal range lying between 5 and 25 centimeters. It is determined by using ultrasound to measure pockets of in utero fluid. Now, as with all biological processes, when something goes wrong with the mechanics, we will inevitably have some pathologies. Polyhydramnios is a process where there is excess fluid in the amniotic sac. Basically, there is too much fetal urine. Typically, with an amniotic fluid index greater than 25. The etiology could be idiopathic, but since we know that fluid is mostly cleared by fetal swallowing, fetal malformations such as esophageal atresia, duodenal atresia, and anencephaly can lead to inability for the fetus to swallow. Gestational diabetes, fetal anemia, and multiple gestations are also common causes of polyhydramnios. On the other hand, we have oligohydramnios. This is where there is diminished fluid to cushion the growing fetus. Basically, there is too little fetal urine. Typically, with an amniotic fluid index less than 5 centimeters. Since we know that amniotic fluid is mostly made up of fetal urine, it makes sense that problems such as bilateral renal agenesis and posterior urethral valves can lead to this phenomenon. Placental insufficiency can also be the culprit. Having too little fluid in the amniotic sac can lead to Potter sequence, which if you recall from your renal chapter, presents with pulmonary hypoplasia, clubbed feet, flattened facies, and other anomalies as a result of the fetus being squished from lack of a fluid cushion. Flash quiz. Anencephaly and duodenal atresia can lead to which amniotic fluid pathology? The answer is polyhydramnios. Remember that with these fetal malformations, the fetus cannot swallow, and so the fluid builds up. The image here shows the classic double bubble sign in duodenal atresia. In this video, we learn that amniotic fluid is a protective fluid made of fetal urine that cushions the baby during development. Polyhydramnios is excess fluid due to fetal inability to swallow the liquid. And oligohydramnios is inadequate fluid due to failed urine production. Thanks for watching, and be sure to click thumbs up if you enjoyed this video.